Thank you for joining us today. The webinar will start in about three minutes. I would like to ask those of you uh, already in the line to indicate in the chat or question field if you can hear me well. Thank you. Welcome to our webinar. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the second webinar in our series to introduce RNA um, Scope Spot Studio, a solution to provide objective and accurate quantification of RNA in situ hybridization assays jointly developed by Advanced Cell Diagnostics and Opinions. For all of you who missed the first webinar in our series, um, there's a recording available um, on on the website where you also entered your information to join this session. And um, I'm also happy that Sarah Agee, Director of Marketing at Advanced Cell Diagnostics, will provide a 10-minute overview uh, on the background to put us all on the same page before we'll have done a, a session held by Dr. Kai Hartmann, um, Director of Product Marketing at Definions, to introduce you to um, RNA Scope Spot Studio in more detail. I would like to um, uh, let you know that you will be muted throughout the session. Um, however, you're very welcome to type in questions in the question field at any time during the presentation. And uh, Kai and Sarah will be happy to answer them um, at the end of the session. With that, I'm happy to hand over to Sarah. Thank you, Florian. Okay, Sarah, I think you just need to confirm that you want to have control over the screen and then we should all get to see it. Okay. Okay, can you see my presentation? I don't. Now we see your screen. Okay, great. So I'm just going to give a brief overview for those of you who missed the first uh, webinar on our RNA scope technology, uh, which is the in situ hybridization platform uh, that the Definian Spot Studio quantification software tool will um, analyze. Hold on, Sarah. I think there's a problem with the screen not coming across, so I'll just move over to our end and I'll advance the slides for you, okay? Okay. I'll just pull it up and then 
Um, hold on, I'll take back control. Okay, so you should all see now uh, Sarah's first slide, and I'll be happy to advance the slides for you whenever you tell me, Sarah. Okay. Okay, go ahead and advance. Yep, we are on the title, and here's the first slide. Great. So uh, our technology for in situ RNA analysis uh, fills the need in between um, some traditional techniques for analyzing DNA using fish or protein using IHC. Previously, technologies for detecting RNA were very cumbersome and not fully commercialized into easy-to-use kitted assays for RNA detection. You can advance the slide. Yep. And so RNA scope uh, is a technique to fill this void uh, by providing multiplex uh, detection of RNA in situ with an easy to use assay. Next slide. Hmm. It's uh, intended to empower pathologists. We've designed it to be compatible with an existing pathology workflow and to be a complementary tool to uh, IHC and FISH and PCR that's already being used within the lab. Next slide. Yep. The basis of our technology uh, is that we design our probes in double Z probe pairs. Um, these probe pairs hybridize into our amplification channel uh, with a sequence specificity. And in this way, we can do simultaneous multiplexing for multiple targets. So here in this cartoon, you can see how the different um, amplifier molecules hybridize to each other to create this macromolecular structure that's detected either chromogenically by a chromogenic assay or with fluorescently labeled probes. And in the next few slides, you'll see a um, animation of how these serial hybridizations build this structure upon the target messenger RNA molecule. And this occurs within the FFPE tissue or fresh frozen tissue during sequential hybridizations in the assay workflow. What's important, if you advance to the next slide, Florian, is that if only one half or the other of the double Z probe pair binds nonspecifically, no amplification occurs. And this is how we get simultaneous amplification of the signal paired with specificity that is essential for achieving single molecule detection. Next slide. And so, as mentioned, the technology is capable of multiplexing. You can use and design different tails on your probes, which we designed for you, um, to achieve up to four target multiplicity simultaneously with distinct signals. Um, because it's a molecular method, we can also do creative things with probe design, such as pool probes together. And you can pool over 10 or more targets together. Um, with the same uh, multi multiplicity channel to give a singleplex assay that is representative of multiple targets in a pooled assay. It's a very flexible technique. It's very adaptive for many needs of um, RNA analysis in situ. Next slide. The, um, the technique has been fully commercialized. We have multiple products available for singleplex chromogenic assays, duplex chromogenic assays. We have fluorescent uh, uh, up to fourplex assays, and these can be used in FFPE standard fixed tissue or fresh frozen tissue. And we can design probes for detection of virtually any gene in any species in any tissue within two to three weeks. Um, you send us your accession number or RefSeq ID, and we would design those probes for you um, that would work within this kitted assay uh, that is uh, shipped to you with everything you need, including wash buffers and detection reagents. Next. The workflow is designed to be very similar to IHC. It's a very simple manual protocol. Uh, you have your slides, you go through deep paraffinization and your uh, H2O block, epitope retrieval, and you treat with a protease. 
Um, then you go through a series of target probe hybridizations and wash steps whereby the amplification structure is built upon the RNA target. And finally, you go through your labeled probe hybridization. And in the case of the chromogenic assay, which the Definian software analysis tool is designed to analyze, you would go through a chromogenic reaction and then a hematoxylin stain. And at the end of this, you would have an easy to visualize uh, chromogenic uh, slide stained for your RNA marker of interest that could be visualized with a simple bright field microscope or with any kind of a slide scanner. And the resulting image can then be analyzed with a tool such as the Spot Studio. Next. The assay can be run in a manual format or it's been fully automated on the Vintana Discovery Ultra or Discovery XT uh, instrumentation system. With these systems, you can uh, fully automate the assay. Uh, here's two examples showing HER2 expression in breast cancer in either a normal or amplified state, or our E67 high-risk HPV uh, uh, assay for detection. This case is showing in cervical uh, tissue. Next. And then the technique has been uh, made so that it's quantifiable. This is what uh, ha Kai will discuss shortly, how to use the Definian software tool to get fully quantitative uh, analysis of your scanned slide images. And in the next slide, you can see how you can take the results of such quantitative analysis and you can do correlative studies against previous results obtained using QRT-PCR, as an example, or you can uh, compare to FISH or any other technique you've used previously in the lab. And this is work that uh, has been published in the Journal of Molecular Diagnostics in March with uh, Dr. Ray Tubbs at the Cleveland Clinic in his lab. Um, and you can find that uh, in the March uh, cover issue. And again, with the fluorescent assay, uh, you can simultaneously multiplex up to four targets. You can use these, uh, this assay in cell lines, in solid tissues, or in hematology samples. We have a new assay that we're launching soon for PBMC detection. And lastly, the RNA scope technique is very robust and reproducible. Um, especially if you use automated assay. But in this case, this is a manual assay conducted on serial uh, cuts of a TMA. This is work done at Yale University by Dr. David Rim's labs. And you can see how well and, and reproducible from slice to slice across multiple cores this assay can be, even when it's run manually in the lab. OK, and with that, I will hand the presentation back to Kai, who will introduce the Spot Studio software tool and give a demonstration. Thank you, Sarah. So um, I'll briefly uh, run through um, just a couple of more slides, just uh, three slides to introduce the Spot Studio software. And as Sarah pointed out, this is really about um, quantification of the RNA scope assay and to make this as easy as possible. So um, the question really is, um, how do you quantify uh, manually? How much hours do you spend manually and how subjective uh, and how reproducible that is? And um, at the end, this software um, was um, brought to life um, in cooperation of uh, Definians and Advanced Cell Diagnostics to uh, fill this gap, um, uh, this quantification gap, um, for customers of the RNA scope assay. And um, the high-level benefits are really better data and higher efficiency. Uh, by better data, we mean a detailed cell-by-cell -cell quantification of the spot signals, so really not going from a, let's say, um, very rough result of manual assessment um, 
uh, to a cell by cell quantification, uh, identify the individual cells, and then inside these cells, uh, the number of spots. And uh, the result is more consistent and uh, more reproducible um, than uh, a manual uh, assessment. And by high efficiency, we mean um, it has a very short ramp up time. So it's really, you can learn it in, uh, in a few minutes. And I will give you a full overview of the functionality uh, as part of this webinar. And uh, there's a really um, fast um, path to the final results. So it's really uh, straightforward to get from uh, the digital image either acquired by a slide scanner or um, by a camera on top of a microscope and um, land uh, at the end um, at the final result, which um, can be further analyzed by uh, statistical means, of course. Um, two um, uh, benefits. Um, or two, two things I would like to share with you on the uh, ease of use and the simplicity. So what you see here is uh, a high-level workflow. So there's a five-step navigation process. And you will see this um, uh, live in the software in a few seconds. And it's uh, very easy also to switch between the images and uh, the settings that you use to quantify the, the images. And there's a batch run uh, functionality um, built in such that um, the processing is uh, taken care of in the background. And it's fully uh, parallel processing, so it uh, makes use of the uh, processors available on your local machine. Um, and really, at the end, um, it's about also result visualization. Um, so the quantitative results uh, will be visualized in different forms. So for example, on the left-hand side, you see a histogram. You see um, the regions that have been uh, created and uh, the individual, cell, individual cells. Um, and at the end, these results can, of course, be exported to an Excel readable format or um, a, a CSV format that can be used for downstream analysis, for example, by, um, by a biostatistics department, if needed. And uh, really, the assessment and interpretation of the results is very fast also inside, um, inside the tool, uh, Spot Studio. With that, I would um, just jump into the software. And as promised, this is a more in-depth um, discussion of the software functionality compared to the last webinar. So for everyone who watched the last webinar, um, this was more high-level overview. And I will go through the complete workflow uh, in detail such that you get a good overview of the functionality. And as Florian pointed out, um, if you have any questions in between, just put them into the questions box. And uh, we are happy to answer them at the end of the webinar. So let's have a look at the workflow first. Um, on the top here, you see uh, the five different steps to the workflow. The first is um, importing the images um, um, into the software. The second is um, adjustment of settings. And uh, in this, you also select uh, the regions for analysis. The third part is the batch run, where you um, trigger the um, analysis in the background of the regions that you have selected. The fourth step is a quality control step where you can um, yeah, look through the results, accept them, or, or even modify them on a um, regional or um, even cellular level if you want. And at the end, you um, end up with the results. And this is what we have um, in front of us. And on the left-hand side, you see uh, a histogram. Um, of the results for, in this case, uh, these two regions that we see here. Um, I'll quickly move out a little bit um, to see the two different regions. And you see the color coding that's exactly matching the, uh, of the individual, individual cells that's exactly matching the histogram here. And it's very interactive. So you can, for example, change the bins. Um, you can change the limit. Um, let's say between the third and the fourth bin, and you see immediately um, that also the coloring changes for um, for the cells in question. So you have a very um, interactive exploration of the final result at the end. This is uh, 
uh, histogram. The second thing is um, uh, that you can have a look at in the results um, step is um, the number of spots on a, a single cell level. So, for example, if I have a look at this particular cell, um, which um, is in the bin over 12, uh, it is highlighted here. Um, and the estimate num number of estimated spots is uh, 36.56. And I'll explain this in a few seconds what this means. And so you can click through the individual cells and to get an overview of the um, as, uh, quality of the results. And you can also uh, go through uh, the individual um, lines over here. Or you can also sort this um, and, and then review the results afterwards. So um, this is a, a seller result, and now I'm going to activate uh, at the top here um, also the um, results on a spot level. And you will notice that there are two different uh, kinds of um, um, spots uh, that are detected here. So one is single spot, that's the yellow. Um, and I'll zoom in a little bit more, um, the yellow ones in here. And this, uh, the other is clusters. For example, here you see a large cluster of spots. And uh, this is demarked in, uh, or outlined in blue. And uh, the method here is to list on the right-hand side, for example, let's have a look at, at this cell here. Um, on the right-hand side, um, you see the table. And this says uh, this particular cell has seven single spots, so the yellow ones. And from the area and the intensity of the, um, of the clusters demarked in blue, um, a formula is applied to this um, based on the area and the, uh, and the intensity. And this comes up with a um, um, number of estimated spots, which is the combination or the sum of the single spots plus uh, an estimation based on the cluster uh, clusters that has been identified. So in this case, this ends up with uh, with different numbers. For example, if we have a look at this here, this has nine single spots and uh, approximately six to seven additional spots in this uh, this um, cluster. So that's the um, um, quantification. Uh, aspect at the very end. So this is a final result that you get. And you get this on um, a slide-by-slide -slide basis, or you get this um, also on a basis of a set of regions of interest. And I'll explain this uh, when I go through the workflow in more detail in a few, uh, uh, right now. So um, as I said, the other uh, point uh, to access the results, and I uh, show this in uh, Excel right now, is um, you get a table uh, with, a, with summary statistics. Um, and if here you see the uh, name of the slide. And you get a lot of uh, other statistics out, like the number of uh, estimated spots per square micrometer, the total number of spots, the median number of uh, spots estimated, and also the different bins at the very end. Um, of the um, um, number of uh, cells in, in each bin. So uh, this is the kind of overview statistics you get. And in addition to that, you will also get um, this table uh, on the right-hand side for each individual um, RI, uh, set of RIs or RI set, um, such that you have an individual cell level uh, result that you can further explore as with other tools. So um, with that, I would like to go through the workflow um, from the start. So we have one uh, image imported already, and I'm going to import a few other images into uh, this project. So let's just do these three. And you see that they immediately come up. Uh, the first one is opened automatically, and you can now um, have the typical slide navigation uh, tools. You can uh, go through the slide very quickly and very efficiently and um, go in and now um, start the analysis. And this is done uh, as a first step in the settings uh, 
part here. And um, what you can do here is, and I would like to draw your attention to the uh, bottom part first, you can um, have uh, create regions of interest with this button. And this is um, done very quickly, so you can just click the button and uh, have a look and uh, demark a region, uh, outline a region, and maybe uh, we do another one here. And here you see um, th these two belong to one ROI set, and this is an important concept to understand. So uh, all regions of interest uh, are belonging to a certain ROI set. And the results that you get at the end are not um, per individual region, but they are for each ROI set. So you will get one result for these two regions at the very end. If you want to get uh, separate results uh, for one slide, you uh, can create a separate ROI set, and I'll just do this now. So a second one, and let's say that's a different tumor type. I want to get um, a second set of results for uh, this one, and just uh, arbitrarily I'll now um, create another region here, and um, these would get uh, uh, yeah, this region would get a, a different um, summary statistic than these two regions at the end. Um, the other thing that can be done in the settings part is to check whether the settings that um, we have here are um, working for uh, this particular image or uh, for this uh, batch of images. So what I would do is, um, independently of the regions that I've selected, um, I can uh, check the settings and, and preview them. And I'll go through the different settings very briefly now. So the first, um, the first setting is uh, the um, cell identification, which is important. Um, so for the cell identification, you can um, choose a hematoxylin level, which um, basically um, detects the um, hematoxylin stain, and from the um, identified nuclei, cells are uh, created uh, or simulated, as you can see in the uh, picture on the right-hand side. Uh, then there's a nucleus diam diameter, a typical nucleus diameter that can be set as it influences the splitting of uh, nuclei into uh, separate entities at the end. So. Um, if you're not satisfied, and I'll, I'll just very quickly um, make an extreme case here to uh, show you what happens if you move this to th three micrometer, which is an extreme, uh, extremely wrong setting, and this would influence the, um, yeah, the, um, the splitting of the nuclei. So these two settings really characterize how the cells are detected and how they are. Um, they are created. So I'll, I'll move back to a more, more reasonable setting here. And this is really uh, more dependent on the tissue type that you have and the kind of uh, nuclei, nuclei um, morphologies that you expect. And um, as I said, it's only a typical uh, nucleus diameter. And um, you can see also in this picture that this uh, picks up a pretty small nuclei here and pretty large nuclei here um, and uh, even larger one here um, pretty well. So you don't have to set this very, uh, let's say with one setting you cover full range of different nuclei of uh, one particular tissue type. Then the second um, set of settings that you can set is the uh, spot identification settings. and it follows the same principle, so you can define a spot intensity level or spot stain level um, that basically sets the baseline for the um, what is considered to be a positive um, staining. And you can, um, in the same manner as for the nuclear diameter, you can set a typical spot diameter, and uh, this will influence the uh, um, the yeah, boundary between individual spots and uh, what is going to be considered as a cluster, which uh, cannot be uh, resolved. Individual spots cannot be resolved. 
And you can also choose between uh, different uh, stain types like uh, DAB and fast red at this uh, at this point in time for the um, for the spot uh, staining. So once you are satisfied with that, you can just move to the next slide with the next button and um, do the same thing here. And I'll just um, for one particular um, region. Uh, our, our eye set, I'll just draw an additional region here and uh, maybe a larger one over here. And um, then move to the ne uh, you could move now to the next and the next and just go through your complete batch of um, um, tissue um, and uh, for one particular experiment and at the end um, start the batch analysis and uh, this is what we are going to do right now. Uh, once uh, all regions have been annotated, or all slides have been annotated, um, this regions you can move to the um, to the batch run. Um, one thing to mention, so you can change the settings for uh, each individual RI set. So you can modify it um, if you want to the particular RI set, but uh, at least for one tissue type, um, they should be pretty consistent over the whole range of um, of one experiment. So um, the recommendation would be to just take one setting for uh, one uh, batch, but it can be fine-tuned if you uh, want to. So on the um, you now move to the batch run and um, just. Uh, start the analysis in the background, and um, what happens here is that um, now the uh, individual regions are being taken and uh, analyzed in parallel on uh, the available processors in the background. So in this case, uh, this is just a two-processor machine, so um, uh, meaning that this will, um, yeah, uh, it will just utilize a, a complete um, number of processors that are available. Um, and come up with the results at the very end. So if you have a large batch of um, slides, uh, the recommendation would be to annotate uh, all of them or select regions on all of them and at the very end start the batch run, um, maybe come, ba come back in, uh, in half an hour and uh, have a look at uh, the results afterwards. So. Um, what you can see here now is that the result for the first slide has been completed. And we can now move to um, the review step or the, the QC step in the workflow. And what you see here is that the, for the first slide, uh, I have already finished the quality control and exported the results. And in the table also the other um, ROI steps that have been uh, analyzed um, are um, visualized um, in the table, and you can now um, QC um, each individual ROI set, like this one or the other one, which only consists of one region of interest, and afterwards um, check the QC button if you are fine with the end result. And um, the other thing that you can do at this particular point is if um, the result uh, for particular cells or particular regions is not um, um, satisfactory. Uh, for example, you have annotated a region that also consists of uh, cell types uh, like uh, that you don't want to include, like stromal cells or inflammatory cells. Then you can uh, remove these cells um, by just uh, clicking on them. Um, let's check for an example in this case. Maybe this one um, is one that you don't want to insert the results. Maybe the one here is not um, not one that you want to include. Or you can also uh, remove cells um, in a region like this. So yes, these would be removed from the results if you um, if you don't want to include that. Um, and uh, at the end, you just check the QC mark uh, here. And you can do the same for the other um, the other regions. Oops. And I'll just go out of this 
mode. So you can do the same for the other regions, um, or you can just accept the results as they are. And I'll just do this right now. And um, now you can also choose to export the results for, um, for both regions. This is an important step in the workflow, is the export of the results. And I'll uh, show you why, because um, now for all um, regions of interest or ROI sets that have been selected for export here, um, the results will be exported if you click this button. And at this point in time, um, the li uh, licenses are consumed. So for each ROI set, um, in this case two sets, um, there will be two licenses um, consumed from a set of 3,000 licenses that uh, are available if you purchase um, our Natescope Spot Studio. So this um, is really um, um, yeah, a, a limit on the number of analysis that you can do. So at this point you have to be really sure that you want to proceed. I click yes at this point. And um, then go into the uh, results part. And this would mean that now you can visualize the results as um, I have shown you already, already previously, now also for the uh, other RI sets. And now you can also compare the different RI sets with, with each other. For example, on the same slide, they are pretty comparable. If I move to the next one, you see that this is a pretty different picture. So you can really explore the different uh, ROI sets from the uh, different slides uh, very efficiently and very easily. There's one other um, review uh, mode that you can use, and that's the table view. And in this, for example, um, so you can choose from a number of um, exported results and for example um, what's interesting is maybe the median number of uh, estimated spots per cell and you get an overview over the three uh, RI sets that um, I'm currently uh, looking at in a heat map like manner that you can have a look at okay this is the highest value and this is the lowest and this is uh, somewhere in between and obviously if the table gets larger this uh, gets more interesting so um i think that's it so uh i've shown you how to go through the complete workflow of our nascope spot studio and um to the focus of showing you how to explore the results at the very end so to briefly recap recapitulate you simply import the images in the load tab. You adjust uh, the settings for individual slides or for a batch of slides. Um, you can preview the settings and you can select regions of interest um, in the settings tab. You can perform batch analysis in the background, which is utilizing parallel processing um, in the batch run tab. You can quality control the results in which uh, uh, in this case you can also modify the results um, and, and clean the results up if needed and in the results tab you can um, really visualize the results and uh, also modify the um, uh, the results um, uh, or um, export the results and um, for downstream analysis with, with other programs if needed. So I think um, we are through. So I'll just bring up this slide. And um, we are now happy to uh, take questions. Thank you, Kai. So I would just remind everyone that you're still welcome to type in questions in the question field. Um, I'll just read them out to Kai or to Sarah um, for them to answer them. So here's the first one for you, Kai. Can you please mention what it is that you, uh, has been probed in the interactive demo slide? Uh, that's uh, actually a very good question. Let's check what PPIB. Uh, 
that's a very good question. So it doesn't say here. Um, so I'm not completely sure at the moment what. Um, so this is a breast cancer example, as uh, as you know, but I, uh, as it says here, but uh, I'm not completely familiar with the um, ethnic conditions and, uh, and the probes that have been used here. Hi, this is Sarah from ACB. So PPIB is a housekeeping gene, along also polymerase uh, 2A is also a housekeeping gene, and these are genes that we typically recommend as a low expression level positive control for tissues. Um, for a higher expression control, you can use something like ubiquitin. And then we also have a negative control that we recommend, which is DAP-B from a soil bacteria uh, transcript. And so in combination with your target gene of interest, uh, you would pair that with a positive control like PPIV or polymerase 2A, along with a negative control like DAP-B for, for a, you know, a robust scientific experimental analysis. Thank you, Sarah. Actually, you mm -hmm. also managed to answer the follow-up question right away. <laughs> so, um, here's another one. Um, does a spot recognition work with a PIS counter stain? So at the moment, uh, this um, has been um, the product has been developed on really hematoxid and counter stain, um, so um, we have not tested it, it on PET. So I. Uh, uh, some tests been done on the um, side of ACB on on PET. Has this been a request already, Sarah? Do you know? Um, you know, I can't say for sure, but what I can say is that you can go to our website. We have a target probe search, and you can search for any target probe we would have off the shelf. Um, would be one we have uh, made before for customers. We can also make a custom probe for any uh, gene of interest. If you send us the accession number, uh, we can make uh, that uh, ready, uh, ready to use. Yeah, maybe um, Stefan, who has uh, re um, requested this or asked the question, maybe you can um, offline send us your uh, requirements why you would like to do this with the past count of stain uh, with any particular probe or or in general. Yeah. That would be very helpful. Okay. Okay, so next question. How soon will the software be extended to cover multiplex stain samples? And how about multiplex IF? So we don't have a um, fixed timeline at the moment. So we are just bringing this uh, to market right now. Um, but the discussions uh, have started, uh, I think, um, one week ago about the next steps and we can keep you up to date um, and we once, uh, this is finalized. We should mention that we have both a chromogenic duplex uh, assay and we have a multiplex fluorescent assay for up to four targets at a time. So, um, you know, we, we would, uh, we, I just wanted to point that out that there are chromogenic and fluorescent options for multiplexing with our technology. Yes, so this is uh, from the RNA-scope assay side, um, and from the software side, I think the um, development plan is not fixed yet, but uh, this is one of the top items on the list, obviously, to extend this uh, also to uh, multiplex staining. And can Spot City be run within the Aperio Spectrum framework? Um, you can run Spot Studio on a pair of um, slides, but um, this is not integrated uh, at the moment into a pair of spectrum. So this is a standalone software product. And can you get a permanent license for the software? Um, this is a um, pure term license model at the moment, um, but um, I think if you have any uh, questions regarding the license model, please go to um, um, or send a letter to marketing at acdbio.com and um, yeah, so um, I think uh, ACD is um, happy to help you um, with um, this request and is also collecting uh, requests like that at the moment. Um, <coughs> along the lines of the functionality, can the software process the whole slide um, analysis? 
Um, you, I mean, there's no limitation on the um, size of the region that you can um, select. Um, but certainly, uh, what we recommend is to um, keep the processing time low for this particular tool, and also to, um, yeah, um, just get get a quick uh, path to the result and um, to really analyze the correct regions um, to uh, keep the um, number of um, regions uh, low and not um, extended to the complete slide. I think this is really um, the purpose of this tool is to get to the result very quickly and just annotate, annotate a few regions or select a few regions and just um, go through the um, analysis very quickly. And um, it's not made for whole slide processing um, in particular, but you can do it, of can course. So we, are, we have tested that. And can I bring into another factor of just biology, um, that that's also going to be a variable of the heterogeneity of the tissue of which you're interrogating? And the more heterogeneous your tissue is, um, the less likely a whole slide uh, imaging will be useful. Um, and of course, the more homogeneous your tissue is, then you know interrogating larger regions um, would be fine. So you also have to think about the, just the biology of the tissue and your marker and what you're staining and whether or not larger size uh, region of interest is appropriate uh, or not. Thank you. Are you working on the black color for RNA scope? Uh, yep. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, and we're always uh, experimenting with different uh, chromogens and uh, developing our technology um, beyond what we have commercialized. If you have any questions about uh, custom applications or things we may be working on, I encourage you to email marketing at acbbio.com. Uh, we're very engaged with hearing from our customers, uh, so please do email us. Thank you. Have you done much on the Terran monolayer cells? Any intentions to make this a tool applicable to high throughput screens in 384 or 1563 well plates? From the assay side, uh, right now we are focused on uh, tissues and cells that are cultured or mounted on glass slides or cover slips. Uh, we do ourselves in, in our own lab use fixed cell pellets uh, for a lot of our work um, where we take pelleted cores and we can arrange those on glass slides from uh, cells representing different cell lines. Uh, you can also use our assay on cells that have been cultured in glass wells. Um, but we, uh, at this time, have not um, commercialized this for high throughput applications. Uh, again, if you have a particular application that you have a question about, uh, please email marketing at acdbio.com. And it is possible that we can meet your need if you just describe your project. How about the dual color image analysis? I think this goes into the same direction uh, as the initial question. So um, it's really about uh, multiplexing on either um, bright field chromogens or bright field chromogens or um, luminofluorescence. And uh, as I said, this is on the top of the list of uh, for the extensions. Yes, maybe another uh, question around the extensions. Can it also be used for regular IHC, for instance, for cytoplasmic and membrane staining analysis? Um, this particular tool um, that we, uh, that the Finis developed together with um, ACD, is uh, really uh, for the RNA scope assay, so for quantifying uh, the RNA scope assay. Um, you can visit the website uh, www.definis.com to find more about uh, other products, uh, for example, the Finis Tissue Studio, that can also address um, uh, regular IHC assays. All right. I think it's important to point out that part of this is because of the chemical nature of the signal is very different between IHC and RNA scope. IHC is typically going to be a, a, a soluble diffuse uh, signal. It's not punctate uh, in dots, 
whereas with RNA scope, you have a punctate dot upon each messenger RNA transcript molecule. So I think you have to, it's a reflection of the nature of the chemistry of the assay, not necessarily the software, and this software has been tailored specifically towards the RNA scope dot transcript detection. Mm -hmm. What is the image magnification that you recommend? So I think in uh, this case what we used is uh, 40x magnification and um, I think this is also um, recommended. All right, then we have our last question. Does Spot Studio work with Affymetrix probes? Quanti gene. Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we have not tested this. Um, we are clearly focused on the RNA scope assay and we um, we're just unable to make claims about another uh, product line on this. Good, so are we. <laughs> Anyways, I would like to thank everyone for uh, your attention and for the vivid participation in the discussion. And uh, we'll close the webinar. You'll get an email with uh, recordings of the webinar, and um, we hope you uh, enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much.